Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. We're supposed to, we're supposed to talk about Jesus. We're supposed to talk about not living in sin. We're supposed to talk about living righteously. We're supposed to talk about being holy. We're supposed to talk about what it means to be in Christ. There's a lot of things we're supposed to talk about, but all the churches are trying to take in this mantra of, well, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to upset anybody. We are the church. Amen. Amen. If you'll uh, clean those up for me, praise God. Well, um, <clears throat> glad to see all of you this morning. I'm going to get my glasses clean so I can see you a bit better. We are ministering on the subject. We started the uh, beginning of the year. On the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, and, and, and as I've been revisiting this subject myself, I've been kind of going, Oop. <laughs> I need to make some adjustments myself here. Praise God. You know, uh, somehow or another, even in the church, where we know that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, it, it's easy for us to kind of slip over into that. He's, the, he's a power. He's an influence. You know, he's something to get a hold of. You know, make us more blessed or whatever. When the, tra the fact of the matter is, he's supposed to be getting ho more hold of us. Amen. We're supposed to be more yielded to him. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so, uh, we're dealing with uh, the person work of the Holy Spirit. We're starting out with proving that the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, I remember a number of years ago, we had a guy in our church. He had gone, he went off to some meeting somewhere. I tell you what, you better watch what meetings you go to. It don't take but one meeting to mess you up. Especially if, you don't, if you're not well grounded in the things of God. He went out to this meeting and came back and he wanted to meet with me. All right. He came from a meeting and wanted to meet. And he started talking about how, you know, that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit was an it. And I thought, where'd you get that from? Well, you know, the Bible says the, the Spirit itself. And I, and I just, oh, Lord, have mercy. You know, I mean, you know, and, and it, I, I don't know if it's a bad confession or not, but sometimes you can't fix stupid. And, I, and I, I started taking the show where the Bible says, you know, the, the Bible talks about when it talks about him being the comforter, the paracletos is first to him, but he, the spirit of truth, has come. So, you know, there's, you know the, this just, it was just a, a translation technique that was used in Romans where it says the spirit itself, because spirit is, is genderless, therefore the pronoun that followed it was supposed to be genderless in proper translation or uh, uh, techniques. And that's what, so that's what they did. But there's plenty of evidence in the Bible that the Holy Spirit's not an it. Amen. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I'll send another after the same manner as myself. Amen. And he'll, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. He said, I'll send another comforter, another parakletos. And that word another in the Greek is real interesting because it means another after the same manner. Another just like me. Okay. He said, I'm going to send another one who's going to be your, par your comforter. He's going to be with you in, in place of me being absent from the earth. I'm going to send another one. And so there are four distinct lines of proof that the Holy Spirit is a person, and we're on the personality part. And we'll get to the others as we get to them, but right now we're in personality. And in covering the fact that, that you know, uh, when we talk about personality, there are aspects that make up personality. One is knowledge. Forces can't know. Okay? Second is will. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And neither, no man can tell where it cometh or whether it goeth. I'm telling you, folks, you know, the Spirit of God has a will. The Bible says, you know, he divides seven to every man as he wills. The, the wind just blows. You know what I'm saying? But the Spirit of God has a will. He, he has a purpose. He has a will. And then another aspect of personality we covered last week is feeling or emotion. Your mind. Now, the Holy Spirit has feeling and emotion. And we're going to get further into this. Uh, the Greek word on, on the word here for... Um, where, where is this? Okay. He that searcheth the hearts of God, Romans 8, 27, uh, knows what's the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The word mind in the Greek carries more than just, you know, uh, the lo logical process. It's thoughts, feeling, and purpose. There's thoughts, there's feelings, there's purpose behind things. The Holy Spirit has a mind. He has thoughts, he has feelings, he has purpose. Okay? This is personality. This is not, I mean, no, electricity is a force. But it's, it's, it's just, if I come up here, it doesn't matter who it is. If you, pour, if you, if you take a about bobby pin, ask Jessica, and stick it in there, it will light you up. You'll come out and go, you light up my life. I, you know, you'll be singing. 
probably in a high, high, high note. You make Bill Medley a tenor. Does anybody know who Bill Medley is? The bass from the Righteous Brothers, all right? Okay? You know, you never close. All right, that's Bill Medley, all right? He'd be singing tenor. All right? Hallelujah. You know, so, you know, but if you pour water in there, it'll, 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 it'll zap you. It doesn't matter who you are. Electricity has no purpose. It, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't purpose itself. Man uses it, and man creates purpose with it, but it does not have, it just goes. It goes where you send it. It, it follows the regulations you put on it with breakers and switches and so forth. Uh, you know, it, it does that. But see, the Holy Spirit's not just a force. He has a purpose. When the Spirit of God is working, there's a purpose behind it. He does not do things purposely. He doesn't come in just so you can get a goosebump on your goosebumps. Now, growing up classical Pentecostal, we were just all about the power. You know, oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power. We, we, we love the power. You know, and I love the power manifestations, but I am telling you there is a purpose behind the power. There's a person behind the power. It's not just, whoo, we had us a certain, oh, man, the, the Holy Ghost was in manifestation, and we just kind of treat him as a toy to be played with when the whole time he is endeavoring to gain more control of your life so he can use you for the kingdom. I'm telling you, encounters with the Holy Ghost where you're slain in the spirit, where the power of God comes on you, is not just so you can feel good. It is, to, it, is a, it is a working of the spirit. It is the fire of the Holy Ghost burning things out of your life so that you're more equipped and better able to be used by God. Not so you can walk out and, you know, talk, go down to the pub and drink a beer and talk about how great the movie of God was today. You know? I'll go out there at the dinner after everybody and sit around. With, with, you know, I, I just, I'm getting fed up with pastors and, quote, ministers who are sitting out at, at the bars after church drinking their beer talking about how great God is. We need to have encounters with God where we are cleansed by the Spirit of God and the fire of God burns things out of our lives and we walk in a purity and a holiness so we don't have to put in some alcohol to get better. We got the Holy Ghost on the inside of us and burn, burning in us and causing us to walk in a place we could not walk in without that. Amen. He needs to be working in us and through us. But we think we're cool. People think they're cool. They're reaching the world by, you know, put, belling up to the bar with them and just talking about how, you know, and, and showing how, how cultural they are. Hey, stupid. God doesn't want you to be like the world. God didn't call you to be like the world. God called you to be like him and to be separated like him by the power of God. I know I said stupid, but, you know, I didn't say idiot. The Bible says you can't call me an idiot. And so I did. Although J.B. Phillips did. Galatians 3.1, oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. All right. That's the J.B. Phillips translation. So the Spirit of God has a purpose. You know, the mind of the Spirit, there's a purpose behind what he does. He moves in our services. I can't. Hallelujah. I almost feel it coming on. He comes in, when we come together as believers, when it... <coughs> <laughs> when they, they got together and prayed, oh, Lord, behold, their threatened and the building shook. They didn't sit around and talk about how the building shook. They were talking about giving us boldness. We'd go out and reach the world with the power of God. God wants us to go out into the world and reach people with the power of God. He wants us anointed by the Holy Ghost so that when we speak into their life, the yoke-destroying, burden-removing power of God infiltrates all the junk that they try to keep God out with and breaks through and bears their soul before a holy God. To the point they come like Peter and said, depart from me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. But Jesus didn't depart from him. I'll make you fishers of men from this day forward. Hallelujah. His presence, his presence should break people instead of emboldening them to stay like they are. Wigglesworth got on, I know, I'm getting to my notes. Anybody ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Wigglesworth was, uh, you know, Wilsworth, with old back in the in the uh, early part of the last century, mid part, you know, he he preached and referred to by many people as the apostle of faith. He just did stuff just out of raw, pure faith. It just, you know, shake stuff up. Walk with God. Amen. Brother Summerall, if you've ever heard of Brother Lester Summerall, he sat under Brother Wigglesworth's feet before the war. Remember the first time Wigglesworth uh, the story, the first time Wigglesworth invited him to his house to pray, he showed up with a newspaper. 
got to the door, Wigglesworth opened the door, said, you, young man, can come in, but that thing stays outside. He didn't need to know the news from the world because he was getting his news from the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he prayed that one of the last things he did before Brother Summerall had to leave and come back to America because they, they expelled all the Americans out of England. He said that the boldness that was on him would come on, him, on Brother Summerall. Now, I was around Brother Summerall numerous times in, in, in private and, 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 you know, and eating with him and in different rooms, laying hands on. That man was like a bull in a china shop. He didn't, I mean, he just was bold for God. He wouldn't even, he would not even, he didn't even need reverse in his car because he wouldn't back up. If he couldn't park where he went out, he wouldn't park. His garage had a garage door on one end and one on the other end. Why? Because when he pulled in, he drove out. He didn't back up because he said, I don't back up for anything. He had a boldness. Oh my, the bold, brother Samuel was bold. That was, on, that was on Wigglesworth. Amen. Praise God. And he just did things out of faith. Amen. The, Ho the Holy Spirit, he was used of the Spirit of God. And one, one uh, biographer wrote and said he raised the dead 26 times. And Wigglesworth thought about three of them. This guy says he knows that of 26 people he raised from the dead in his ministry. See, the Spirit of God doesn't come on us just so we can have a, have a heyday. He doesn't infill us just so we can talk about how great the Holy Spirit is in our, in our heart. He comes on us with a purpose, and he comes into us with a purpose. To empower us to be witnesses. Remember Jesus said, go in Jerusalem and tell you there until you be endued with power from how after that the Holy Ghost has come on you. And you shall be witnesses. The empowerment of the Spirit is to make you an effective witness for Jesus. To bring people into the kingdom. So when we come together and we have Holy Spirit services. And I, I, I'm all for the shout and running hoop. I mean, I'm, I, I know the Holy Ghost does that. Been in the services, taking part in them, run with the best. Amen? I mean, they used to call my, my denomination holy rollers. Because they just believe we just roll right out of the front door of the church, right down the steps. You know, you go in that church and hang in from the chandeliers. Now, I've, I've been in many a service, and I never saw one person hang from the chandeliers. I did see them roll under the pews a few times. Actually, I rolled under the pews a few times. Hallelujah. I, 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 don't, I don't believe, I, I'm not against that. I'm saying we have to understand there's still a purpose behind it. He's infusing us for something. Amen? So he has, he has a purpose. So his mind, the mind, meaning he has a purpose, he has purpose. Now let's talk about another aspect of the emotions of the Spirit. Let's read now from Romans chapter 15, verse 30. Something we don't really talk about a lot. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God and for me. Notice that the Spirit of God has love. The Spirit of God has love. Romans chapter 15, I think I said, verse 30. The Holy Ghost loves. Now, we all, we all talk about the Father, how, how much God the Father loved us. He loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We talk about the love of the Father. He loved you so much, he sent Jesus as your Redeemer. He gave up his only begotten Son. He loved you so much that the Son that sat at his right hand, he gave to be a propitiation for sins for you. He sent him to justify you. He gave him up in order that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Can you say glory to God? Then we think about the love of the Son. How the love of the Son stripped himself of his rights to deity and the glory and came and walked among us as a man on the earth, praise God. That he became a man. He went to the cross. He paid the price. He asked the Father, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, your will be done. And he submitted himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Why? Because he loved you. But how often do we talk about the love of the Spirit? That the Holy Ghost came at the behest of the Son. And I'll ask the Father and he'll send you another comforter. And what did he come to do? He came to strive with you day after day, year after year. I mean decade after decade to draw you to Jesus Christ, to reveal he loves you. He loves you like the Father loves you. He loved you like the Son loves you. He loved you and his mission and his love was to woo you to Jesus Christ. The Spirit loves you. This is an emotion that is only a person can exhibit. 
The Holy Spirit loves you, and he loves you so much, he strives with you. He works with you. He comes to you. He bids you come to Jesus. He sends laborers across your path. He brings you to people so they can share Jesus with you. I mean, he deals with you in the nine hours when you're struggling with life and struggling with things, and you were doing those places. He would come and say, Jesus is the answer. The Holy Spirit loves you. Oh, thank God. We talk about the love of the Father, the love of the Son, but I want you to know the Holy Spirit loves you. He's, he's God. He's the third person of the Godhead. He personally loves you. Think about that. How many of you have ever stopped to think about the fact that, yeah, the Father loves me and the Son loves me, but we don't, but when we get to the Holy Spirit, somehow or another, He becomes something. That, no, He loves you. And His mission of love was to woo and to draw you to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Even, I mean, he's gone into the bars. He's gone into wherever you went. He's gone there to draw you to Jesus. When you're running from God, he's standing there saying, you shouldn't be doing that. You need Jesus. Come on now. You know he was. We all know that. When you're rebelling against all the things of God, he's still standing there saying, hey, I love you. And I've come to, bring, I've come to present to you Jesus Christ. You need the Lord. Oh, how he loves us. How many, how many of you have ever sang that song? Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He, he gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. And we thank God that Jesus did love us enough to come. But I'm telling you, the Spirit loves you. Because He works in perfect harmony with the Father and the Son. And the Father said, I've got a plan. I'm going to send Jesus. I'm going to send you. And Jesus said, yes, Father, I'll go. And He came to earth because the Father loved us so much, the Son came. And because the Son loved us so much, He gave it all. And then Jesus said, I'll send another one. And the Spirit came, and because he loves us so much, he strives with all humanity day after day after day and bids them, whosoever will come and meet this wonderful Savior. Because of the love of the Spirit, he loves us and woos us and bids us come. And he just, he just keeps going. He, you think the Energizer Bunny is something? You ain't got nothing on the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Next out of, the, out of this realm, uh, the Holy Spirit is good. Amen. Nehemiah 10, 9, 20 says, Thou gave us thy good spirit. Oh. He loves us and he's good. That means he's not going to not, not do anything that will hurt you. Amen. Amen. He won't do anything to hurt you. He'll only do that which is good for you. Every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father above in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Who do you think is in the earth presenting it? The Holy Spirit is here. Jesus, um, now, how many, how many, now I know if you grew up in church at all, especially Pentecostal churches, you sang this song at least once in your life. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. You'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart cry. Now, the truth of the matter is, he ain't passing by. He's seated at the right hand of the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for you. Well, who's here? The Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit who's in manifestation. It's the Holy Spirit who's representing the, the seated and ascended Christ. And he is God. And he loves you. And he manifests himself in services. And he does things. And he, and, he, and he has the, he brings the manifestations of the spirit into fruition. And divides into men. So they can be ministered to people. To help people and to minister life to people. I was listening to Copeland the other day. And uh, well, actually last night, Janie had on one of the Copeland services. And he, and he was talking about that his mentor, you know, and he had, you know, Brother Roberts was his normal one. Brother Hagen was, was another of his major mentors, you know. Um, if you actually if you go back and get Brother Copeland's sermons from the time he first got started, they're the same title and the same message as Brother Hagin's. Brother Hagin walked by one day and looked at the table and said, at least you could change the title. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Betty Harrison gave me one of Brother Hagin's tapes. 
I'll, I'll never forget the story. Brother, Brother Coburn came in to a service. Buddy Harrison was working at the table. He said, I'll give you the title to my car if you'll give me these tapes. But Buddy said, he walked down there, looked out at the car and said, I'll just give you the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> the car was so bad he wouldn't even take the car. Was quite, I'll just give them to you. Hallelujah. But he said, Brother Roberts, somebody asked Brother, Brother Roberts one time. <laughs> Brother Coke was in the room and they asked me, and said, which gift of the Spirit is the most important? He said, whichever one you need at the time. Let's face it. If you need healing, you don't need a manifestation of discerning of spirits. <laughs> unless it's a devil causing the healing. I mean, I mean, the sickness, unless there's a demon spirit in force there. Amen? The Spirit of God loves you so much and loves humanity so much. He's reserved manifestations or gifts, as we, we often call them. The word gifts is, in the Greek really isn't there for that whole passage. You know, but he's got manifestations that he can bring up and use to minister to people just because he loves them. Amen. Just because he loves them. Just because he wants to show the goodness of God. He wants people to know God is good. Remember, remember uh, uh, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed. Anybody know what Jesus was anointed with? The Holy Ghost and power. And he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Why? God was with him. <coughs> the Holy Ghost came on Jesus. And that anointing of the Holy Ghost, now, you know, Isaiah 10, 27, that you know, the yoke should be destroyed and the burden removed because of the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the anointing. We know that from 1 John. But you have an unction from the Holy One. <clears throat> first John, uh, I think, 2, and then verse John 20. First John 2, 20. The Holy Spirit's the anointing. And that anointing comes. Remember, he's a, he has a mind. He has a will, his purpose. He manifests not just so he can have fun. He manifests to demonstrate and to show forth the goodness of God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for sending another. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said, I'm going to send another after the same manner as myself. Same character, same desire, same plan. Reach people. Amen? Amen. Writers in the New Testament said this, the goodness of God leads a man to repentance. He sent his good spirit. He has good. I said he has good. He is good. Remember one guy said, good master. He said, why call thou me good? There's none good save God alone. Here's an attribute. Thou good spirit. God's spirit is good. God, there's none good but God alone. The Holy Spirit's God. Amen. And he comes to manifest the love of God and to show forth his goodness to humanity. Next, in, in the realm of personality, the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Yeah. Grieve not, Ephesians 4.30. The Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. We, we think about this. Now, a lot of times we think about grieving the Spirit by acting up in church when he's moving. Now, I, I grew up, now let me tell you, I said this last week. Growing up in my Pentecostal church, you didn't get, act silly when the Holy Ghost was moving. Either my grandma or ma or uh, Aunt Louise or some other elder in the church. If you, you got to cutting up, they, would, they, they knew right where on the temple or on that earlobe to pop you. To straighten you up in church. I pop! The Spirit of God's in manifestation. Now, you, now I, I know you can get overboard with it, but when the Spirit of God's in manifestation, He's holy. Yeah. Yeah. He is holy. And we should not take it flippantly. Remember, now, how many have ever heard uh, uh, Dad Hagen, read that Hagen's book? Plans, Purposes, Pursuits. Now, he took a, now if you don't know this, he took a lot of heat for that. Because it's right in the middle of the charismatic crazies. I was in the charismatic crazies. I was Pentecost, came in on the Word of Faith and the charismatic crazies. We were crazy. Yeah. We were lunatics. You know? I mean, if you felt something, you're supposed to do something. We didn't know how. You know, I heard, I've heard Dad Hagen talk about having services where he sat down and for an hour and a half nobody moved. They just sat there in the presence of God. People can't do that anymore. And he said, and after out of half, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God, I mean, somebody walk in the door, walk in, walk in, sat down at the back of the church, sat there for about five minutes, and got up and fell, came and ran down and fell across the altar. And, then, and nobody did it. They just all sat there and watched. Well, you got to go do something. No, God started it. God finished it. 
The presence of God was so strong, they didn't have to do anything to let God do what he was doing to that person's life. Amen? I remember I was at Rainbow in 1980. Uh, let me think about that. This is 1981. So uh, we used to do back in Tulsa, uh, back in the earlier years of Rhema, they had two seminars a year. They had a Holy Spirit seminar and they had a prayer seminar. Okay? And uh, so we had, you know, the prayer seminar was... Um, um, and both of them were kind of like one, you know, early winter and one was late spring, uh, late winter, early spring. But this particular year, uh, the prayer, it was prayer seminar. We went three weeks. Okay? They never done it. I don't think they've ever done it since. Now it's called Winter Bible Seminar. They put both of them going to have one seminar. And, uh, but we were, in the, we were into the second week. And uh, some of you may have heard of Sister Jean Wilkerson. She's a true prophetess of God. One of the few people Brother Hagin ever recognized as a prophetess. He said he, got ten, he can't tell you how many people kept prophesied to him he was supposed to get a tent. He said, I probably had 10,000 people tell me to go get a tent, and the Lord told me to go in the churches. You can't, you can't go by what somebody said, yea, thus saith the Lord, if it doesn't bear witness what you already got in your heart. And uh, but Sister Wilkinson was there, and we were, we were at the end of a service one night, and we all gathered around this over in what's now called the Rooker uh, Memorial Auditorium. It was, it, was Raymond, it was the Raymond Church at that time. We all kind of, kind of gathered around, just in a circle up at the front. I mean, the building was full, 2,500 people plus, all up there. And Dad Hagen's ministry, and all of a sudden he stops and says, Sister Wilkerson, I believe the Lord wants to use you. Now, see, people of the Spirit aren't moved by time. People who follow the Holy Ghost just let him work in his time. And so it seemed like it, you know, in young people, young and zealous people just want to move and do something. Oh, got to go. Got to do it right now. I say, I say, son, sit down. Be, all right? And so Brother Hagin's sitting there, and we, it goes on. We're just sitting there. He's, he, he had said, Sister Wilkerson, believe. And he didn't say anything else. Well, after what seemed like an eternity, somebody over here on this side starts going and speaking out in tongues. He said, hold that! I thought, my goodness. Glad it wasn't me. <laughs> he says, go ahead, Sister Wilkerson. And I am telling you, I was, I was not far from her. Well, in that building, you can't be far from him anyway. But she, now, how, many ever, how many know who Billy Brim is? How many ever heard her talk on Copeland's show? And she kind of gets that, and uh, she kind of gets that little high-pitched thing she does. She got that from being around Sister Wilkerson. That's where it came from. Sister Wilkerson ministered that way. Because she used to sit at her feet. And um, Sister Wilkerson just opened her mouth. And she began to prophesy. I've only had this happen a few times. I'm telling you, the hair on the back of my neck stood up when she opened her mouth. Just the first word out of her mouth. See, when you walk in the Spirit, you, they, you can bring the anointing. You can just bring the anointing. And she began to prophesy and began to speak about the glory of God. And I'm, I'm telling you, oh, my. And there wasn't anybody clapping. And nobody was screaming and shouting. There was a holy hush in there. See, we can grieve the Spirit. By getting off. Now, I got on this because of, of uh, plans, purposes, and pursuits. The week before camp meeting in 1987, the Lord appeared to Brother Hagin in a vision. And he said, clapping is neither, and this is how he started out the vision, clapping is neither praise nor worship. And we do it all the time. And I'm, not, and listen, I'm not against it. I don't think, you know, you know. But he said what we've done is we've got, you know, give Jesus a standing ovation. Jesus doesn't need a standing. He needs to be worshiped. The four priests and the four and twenty elders don't give and stand and get a kind of standing ovation. They get it and they throw their crowns at his feet and say, worthy is the lamb that was slain. It's, it's, it's a worship. I said it's a worship. And, and we went on and talked to him about substituting brass for gold. See, we want to take a lot of times human emotion instead of giving spiritual worship. Amen. You can grieve the spirit that way. You can grieve the spirit by getting into the flesh instead of getting into the spirit when he's in operation. Amen. That went over big. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you. We'll see you next week. All right. But I want to talk to you about another thing right now that you can grieve the spirit. How many believe, how many are filled with the Holy Spirit? How many believe the spirit indwells you? How many believe he walks with you and talks with you and guides you and leads you? He knows what you're thinking. Amen. You can grieve the Spirit by your thoughts. You can grieve the Spirit by your actions. You can grieve the Spirit by where you go. You can grieve the Spirit a whole lot of ways other than clapping in church. I mean, if y'all don't get any more enthusiastic, we're just going to start calling this the first church, Faith and Victory Church of the Frozen Chosen. 
Amen. You know it's so. If we really, but see, I, I think we, we, we uh, just like where, where Kenyon talks about faith and mental ascent, they're not the same thing. They look the same, but they're not the same thing. I think there's a lot of people who say, I know that the Holy Spirit's a person, but in, in real heart, they don't believe it. Because if they did, they wouldn't do some of the things they do. They wouldn't say the things they say. And they wouldn't think some of the things they think. They'd be casting them thoughts down. And there's imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Because the Holy Spirit is there to judge it right there. And he's grieved by your actions or by your thoughts. Or by what you didn't do that you should have done. If, he's really, if you really believe he's indwelling you. That one ever big. Everybody go... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> we do a little handles Messiah here and get you moving. All right, praise the Lord. We don't want to be griev we do not want to be grievers of the Spirit. Do we? We want to be yielded to Him. We want His cleansing and working in us all the ways. He wanted him to, you know, Jesus said there's another come after me. I mean, John the Baptist says there's another one who comes after me mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. We talk a lot about the Holy Ghost, but I believe there's a fire he brings that works in our life, that brings a cleansing to us. Well, I got saved and I'm under grace. don't matter. Hogwash. You don't even want to go down that road right now. It made me mad. You cannot just go right here and scream grace and do whatever you want to do and think the Holy Ghost is not going to be grieved. Smoking up some dope with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. You know, he gave me herbs. Of the, people come up with crazy. Listen, they're saying this stuff. God created the herbs of the field, so we're smoking dope. And the Holy Ghost is going, bleh, 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 bleh. My pastor used to say, if God wanted you to smoke, he'd put a smokestack on your head. Hallelujah. You know, suck it in. If... I don't see nothing wrong with it. Why don't you just let the Holy Ghost cleanse you? There's a lot of things you could probably get away with and still make it, maybe, maybe make it into heaven. But why do you want to make it into heaven instead of marching in? Coming in. He's not coming back for the dirty church. He's coming back for the glorious church, having not spot or wrinkle. And that takes a work of the Holy Ghost and individuals in the body of Christ to cleanse and to burn in them and to separate them and to, and, and to come to a place that we are no longer grieving him. And what happens when we're not grieving him? We're pleasing him. And when we're pleasing him, what happens? He uses us to do what? To carry out the will and the purpose of the Father. What's that? He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. The Holy Spirit wants the church so it can lift Jesus up. And not some psycho babble and not some watered down garbage that people come up with. I'm talking about a church that's... <clears throat> okay. At least I didn't knock it over and spill the water. I, well, I did spill the water. Anyway. Oh, thank you, Father, for the precious Holy Spirit. Let's learn not to grieve the Spirit. And I, and I think it's not necessarily as much of action of, I don't want to grieve the Spirit. I don't want. It is a recognition of who indwells you. Now, how many, how many remember being in school? There are things you did not do in school because the teacher was in the classroom. The second she stepped out the door, what happens? Pencils go to the ceiling. Spitballs start going across the room. You know, if it's a test, you reach over and grab your neighbor's test and say, well, let me get these before, real quick. And my, I, I hate to admit this, but my class, when we, got to, when we got to high school, every year, as soon as I, we get to our homerooms and get to our first classes, our teachers look at us, I know about this class. <laughs> we had a reputation. We were world class. How can I say this? Cheaters. <laughs> Man, we, we were good. But they all heard about us. And so the, what, the, the, we had the eye on us. And it wasn't the eye of the tiger either. You know? You know, there's, a, there's all kinds of stuff that you don't do when the teacher's in the room. Or, probably my son could attest to this, 
putting pencils in the ceiling when they turn their back. You put a few pencils in the ceilings. Whole pack, okay. Had to buy some tiles. I did, I had to buy tiles for the school. But we, when, when, when the authority is watching, we don't do things. Yeah. When we are aware of the presence of the Spirit, there will be things you won't do. Yeah. 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 And everybody goes, oh! yeah. help me, Jesus. <laughs> we know that. If the Spirit of God, if you, if you really believe he's watching what you're doing, yeah. there's stuff you wouldn't do. There wouldn't be as much uh, uh, junk in the church that's going on. You wouldn't have pastors doing some of the stuff pastors are doing. I'm talking about the secretary and the pastor and the worship leader and the pastor and the pastor and whoever else the pastor's dealing with. I heard one church that the women in the church believe it's their calling to take care of the pastor. Yeah, they're called of the devil. And he goes along with it. You don't think the Holy Ghost is grieved over that kind of junk? Dear Lord Jesus. God loves people. And he sent the Spirit to lead us and to guide us in the truth. We cannot grieve him. We cannot grieve the Spirit of God. We have to let him bring holiness into our lives. Oh, so that we're clean. And he wants to use us. And he wants a purity in us so his glory can flow through us. So the anointing of God flows out of us. Remember what Jesus said? He said, he that cometh after me, he said this, and not he that cometh after me, he said this, he said, when the, the spirit, he said, out of your belly. Now remember this, he said salvation was like a well of, of water springing up on the spring. How many of you have ever been to a spring? I think they're cool. I just think springs are cool. Now I've been to Silver Springs in Florida numerous times, especially as a kid when we lived in Florida. And you can look down there and see 80 feet straight down just as crystal clear as if it's two foot deep. And you can see the water coming up out of those, out through the, through the uh, sandy, salt, whatever it is down there. And you can see the springs just bubbling up. I mean, just pouring up. That's cool. But Jesus said that when you're filled with the Spirit, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. God wants us in a place where rivers of his life are flowing out to humanity. <clears throat> I thought I was going to get to preach. I, felt, I thought I was going to get having a preaching. He went and got all tender. <laughs> and I was ready to crank her up and get after it. But that's okay. Why? He's in charge. I said, he's in charge. Let's not grieve the spirit. Can you say amen? amen. It's 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. All right. I can't go any further because we, we've got, there's so much more to cover. So the love of the spirit, the goodness of the spirit, and he can be grieved. Let's not grieve him. Oh, how he loves you. You know, the spirit of God loves you. When he convicts you of sin and deals with you about sin, I know we got bozos out there saying that you don't have to repent for sin. The Holy Spirit deals with you. Not to, not to rip you apart, but to bring you back. He wants to bring you back to the place of holiness where God can minister to you and through you. He wants to make, sure, he wants to make a continual blessing. It's, it's, not, it's not a thing of, you know, if you talk about sin, you'll make people, I mean, you know, it, it, I'm so tired of some of the stupid stuff people say. The Spirit of God will deal with you about sin. Why? Because it hurts you. It's destructive to you. Oh, but he loves you. How he loves you. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost now, not just the Father, not just the Son. The Holy Spirit loves you. And pastors who will tell you that something is wrong so you can repent and get it straight, love you. You know who doesn't love you? Do anything you want, it doesn't matter. They don't love you. People who do that, they don't, they don't, you know, they don't love you. They can't love you. You know, I know there's an old saying that we, we have, we use, if you're going to be dumb, you've got to be tough. 
I'm sorry, but if I see you going to the electrical socket over there, I'm going to try to stop you. Amen? And I'm going to say you learned your lesson. It might, it might be the last lesson you ever learned because it might kill you. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you for the love that you have for us. Jesus, we thank you for the love you have for us. And oh, great and mighty Holy Spirit of God, how we thank you for the love that you have for us. We thank you for your goodness. And we commit to a life that will honor you and not grieve you. We thank you for working in our lives. In Jesus' name. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.